Member Statements. I call the member for Swansea. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. I rise once again to raise some serious concerns about the partial collapse of the Pelican Marina in Lake Macquarie, which occurred in the Swansea electorate on Monday, the 8th of February 2016, and the way that this matter has been handled by the government, and in particular the Minister for Primary Industries and Minister for Lands and Water. Since day one, I have been astonished by the lack of response from the Minister. Today, I would like to put on public record the fact that not once, not once not since the once. marina collapsed into Lake Macquarie, has the minister responsible even picked up the phone to advise me exactly what action the government has taken, plan, if the plans it wishes to take, or to address the serious and ongoing issues that the community has raised regarding this disaster. For some context, Mr Deputy Speaker, the Pelican Marina situated in the picturesque location on the shores of Lake Macquarie was, until recently, a major draw card for people visiting the Swansea electorate. It also happened to be situated on Crown land. It's been a traumatic couple of months for the people whose livelihoods rely on the marina. For the businesses, the workers and the residents alike, they appear to have lost everything. As I said, immediately after the collapse, the loss of Milano's on the lake has come to symbolise what a loss of the marina means to our community. Milano's was a bustling function centre, restaurant and bar, known for its picturesque backdrop and as a beautiful place for people who get, to get married. But that has all gone now. But, Mr Deputy Speaker, the tragedy here is, I believe, that the loss of the Pelican Marina may have been avoidable. Speaker, I originally characterised the Minister's handling of the collapse as ambivalent and inactive. I'd like to say that now I characterise his actions as arrogant and dismissive, showing no concern whatsoever for the livelihoods of those who have lost everything as a result of this collapse. When I first discovered the dilapidated condition of the marina, I immediately wrote to the Minister to advise him of the community's concerns, which, quite frankly, I shared. Little in the way of substantial response to the concerns about the condition of the marina were ever received. A Labor Pro City Council report recommended in September 2014, some 16 months before the collapse, that millions needed to be spent retrofitting and replacing infrastructure along the marina due to existing and future hazards. Various actions to address the problem were recommended within the report. However, full implementation of those actions could not begin until the state government signed off on the draft. Now, obviously, this never happened. While this, in, while this inaction is shocking in itself, I am left bewildered by the Minister's handling of the collapse after the fact. I want to take this opportunity to put on public record my disappointment about how the Minister has treated my community in the two months that have followed this disaster. On the 9th of February, the day after the collapse, I wrote to the Minister asking if he would release a copy of the work cover report that identified serious safety issues at the site, as well as the independent structural report into the condition of the marina. I asked of the Minister in those representations what assistance there would be to relocate residents who live at the marina and whether their legal interests in the site would be recognised. I also asked the Minister to outline what assistance would be provided to those stakeholders whose livelihoods depended on the operations of the marina, and I called on the Minister to personally visit the affected site. <coughs> Nine days later, the Minister sent along an advisor and a departmental representative to meet with me in an attempt to address some of the concerns that my community had. Can I see the report, I asked. We'll see. That was, that was the reply. Will the government be offering compensation to those who lost everything as a result of the collapse? Uh, we're not sure at this stage, was the answer. Question after question was dodged by these representatives, and I was made to feel like nothing more than a mushroom, and I told them that as well. So I wrote to the minister again to diligently follow up on the questions that the representatives could not answer. Then I waited, and I waited, and I waited, and I'm still waiting. Nothing. No response. So I wrote again. That is the third time. Still to this day, I have not received a single response from the Minister for Primary Industries and Minister for Lands and Water. I said last month that while I do believe that ultimately this entire disaster could have been avoided, we need to move forward with swift and tangible action to ensure that those affected will be no worse off because of the inaction of the bad Liberal government. Once again, I look forward to the Minister's response, but I will not hold my breath. Mr Deputy Speaker. Yes.